Unbelievable. We switched up filming days because there's always landscapers out here. And guess what? Here we are again. We switched days and more landscapers. You know what? I don't care. Let's just get into it. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to another week of Fogo Life. I'm your host, Captain Ron. This is... Tina Cannon. That's right. This is Tina Cannon. As you all probably know, super world champion barbecuer and just all around good person and good friend of mine. She's got some great tips, right? I'm going to show them all to y'all today. All right. She's going to tell us all about the tips that she hears, problems with the big green egg, things that you might want to help out, tips and tricks for the big green egg with Tina Cannon today on the Fogo Life. So there's a number of different ways that we could use to clean out our egg. Tina, what do you have there? What's your first way that you're going to tell us about? Well, this little tool here, mm -hmm. I use it to scrape out all of the ash into a bucket. Okay. And it makes it super easy. So I get most of the bulk out with the tool. Okay, so let's tell everybody what this is. This is actually, a, it's called an ash tool. It's made by Big Green Egg, and it's used to clean out through the front vent. Mm -hmm. So instead of talking about it, why don't we go over to the egg and actually show the nice folks how to do it. Let's go. Here. Now, before you clean out your egg, you always want to do this. Right? Take your yep. kick ash basket and give it a good shake. Let all that ash come through and sit down in the bottom of the egg. Oh, yeah. And there was quite a bit of it. Now, the beautiful part about the kick ash basket is after you do that, all this charcoal is now ready for reuse. But let me put it on the side while we get to cleaning. You're all lucky this week because I'm not going to do a lot of talking. I'm going to leave it to Tina. So, <laughs> Tina, you got your trusty ash tool there. Right. Right. So, why don't you show us how to demonstrate how to clean the ash out of the egg with the ash tool? Well, either with a dustpan okay. or you can use a. Uh, can I hold this for you? Yeah. Okay. You can be the assistant today. All right. So I basically just reach in and I scoop around toward the back. Then everything just comes uh, right okay. out, just like that. So the, the ash tool has an L shape on the end. Mm -hmm. So all you do is you just stick it in that front vent. Okay, you gotta make sure your firebox should is aligned. It should always be aligned with the hole in the firebox. Yeah. And you just pull out the old ash. Make sure you've let your egg cool down. I typically will do this in the morning after I cook, right. so I know everything is cool. I like to make sure that it is so. I usually do it before I light it the next time. That's yeah. usually when I do it. I'll leave it, let the thing burn, you know, let all that ash drop down. Also, shake your kick ash basket before you do this. You want to make sure you get all that ash out of it. So that's one way to clean it out. I've got a whole other way to do it. Let me show you. No, let me show you. No, you're showing No, I'm, show I'm so confused. Let's just show them together. Okay. Don't hit me with the ash tool. <laughs> Ron, what do you do to get all of this off? All right, so this is real simple. You know, you can take a little brush and, and wipe it down. Mm -hmm. I like to take a piece of aluminum foil, just wad it up like this, and just kind of go over it. Give it a good scraping down. Mm -hmm. Get all this stuff off here, because you're going to actually clean a layer of soot off of there, too. So it kind of really does two things. You're cleaning it out, and you're getting all of the ash down in the bottom, which is exactly where we want. Yeah, it falls off really easy. Yeah, it comes off easy, and you can see it really makes it nice and clean. It even brings it down to the original color in a lot of places. So don't forget, the fire is right, right below this. So as it's cooking, it's actually cleaning some of this, which kind of goes into the clean burn. But so you got that, you know, make sure all of it's down in there. All right. And it doesn't matter so much important because I'm going to show you a way that even if it's stuck up here, we're going to clean it all out. Pretty fun, right? Oh, yeah. I oh, yeah. Right. I can't wait to watch a man clean. Let me go get my modern piece of equipment. <laughs> Where did he go? All right. I got it. The best piece of equipment that I like to use to clean out my grill shop that. All right, I seem to have lost Tina. Oh, there you yes, are. She is. Where were you? Well, where was I? Where was you? I went to get looking, this modern piece of equipment here. I was looking for you. All right, so, but no, I want to talk about something real serious about the shop back before we get started, okay? Um, I always say to do it cold, obviously, like that. There's another thing. The filter that goes in here, they make a special filter for ash, okay? It costs a couple bucks extra, but if you're going to be using your egg a lot or your any grill a lot and you want to clean it out, you need to get the one that's ash safe. Otherwise, the way that it works is that air comes in here, it goes through here and gets blown out here. If you don't have the one made for ash, you're just gonna blow all your ash right out the back and make a giant cloud wherever you are, making your spouse or a significant other really happy, right? Yeah. We don't ever make our spouses upset with our barbecuing, do we? Never. No, never. All right, Tina, I'm gonna let you do the honors here. Okay. Yay. Um, you can do you can do all the vacuuming, or do you want me to do the vacuuming? It's not your birthday, so I didn't get you a vacuum or anything like that. Oh, good. <laughs> now I'll do it. So the nice part is, you know, there's chunks in there, there's ash. This is gonna take them all up. So all right. you're not gonna hear us for a minute, so I'm gonna turn this on. She's gonna vacuum this sucker out. Okay. 
Just call me Hazel. Well, are we done, Ron? Nope. Actually, I like to do one step further on this thing a lot, okay? You don't have to do this every time that you clean it out, but I like to take out the internal ceramics, okay? Be careful because they are ceramic and they are prone to breaking. So candle with care. Because what oh, happens yeah. is that there's a lot of ash that drops down from those holes and things like that. So as you can see here, the fire bowl has holes in it to allow heat to come up through there too, but it also lets drop ashes drop down in here like this. So this buildup isn't so bad, but if you don't wait, if you don't, you know, if you wait too long in between times doing it, you're really gonna build it up and, uh, and, and it's gonna not perform properly. Isn't that right, Tina? That's 100%. Okay. Airflow is the key. You know, before we move on to tip number two, Tina, I want to share something with the nice folks out there is that right. we have a BGE playlist on our site here of all things to do with BGA from A to Z. We're covering a lot of stuff that we've covered in other videos, but if you're new to egging, or even if you're experienced to egging, hit this playlist up here. There's all kinds of videos from how to set it up, how to buy it, how to use the convector. Everything you need to know about the big green egg is all in this BGE 101 playlist. As promised on to tip number two, this one has to do with a stuck regulator cap. Is that right, Tina? That's right. Good. Well, I'm going to let you handle this one. All right. So I've got a couple tools I like to have around to do this. I like to use gloves for this one so my mom don't say, your hands always look dirty in videos. <laughs> Our uh, some, mom's related. <laughs> yeah, they must be. So then I've got foil to help scrub off some of it. And sometimes I'll use a skewer. A wire or, brush? A wire brush. I usually take these out of my husband's golf bag, rinse them off, and don't tell him and put them back. Oh, no. <laughs> but don't tell it. All, right. All right, cool. So let's let's show the people exactly what we're talking about by a stuck regulator cap. All right. right, the regulator cap will get stuck from the buildup of creosote. So it will get where it's kind of hard to open, as you see, just like that. Okay. So the key is keeping this clean. Now what I do is I wait until the grill cools down some, but it's still warm. It makes it so much easier. Yep. When the grill's cold, this is much more difficult. Sure. And you probably won't be able to get it open. Right. So I've, no I've noticed like with mine, as it heats up, and all of a sudden it gets a whole lot easier yes, to move, right? Exactly. Yeah. Okay. So but I want to be able to, when it cools down, to be able to open and close it, you know, just Give sure, so the, the reason basically for doing it when it's hotter is because all the creosote is kind of almost melted in yes. a way and, and it becomes more it's pliable, softer, right? yes. Okay. That makes so sense. So I will open it and I actually will start when it's warm by taking foil. Let's put the old gloves on, Mom. Okay. Yes. I will take a piece of foil first and I will just rub up underneath here, just like this. Okay. Oh, so underneath the cap here. Mm -hmm. I open it as far okay. as it can go and okay. then I just scrape under. Makes sense. I mean, you know. It's so simple, but it makes sense, yeah. you know? and it makes a big difference. And it depends on how often you cook and right. how often you would need to do this. Yeah, because this top is sealed pretty good. The top yeah. seals to the bottom pretty well. So, right, okay. exactly. Yep. And then I do the same thing right inside. You hit like the top edge too? Yep. yep. I just get inside, the top. Sometimes it will build up here that's left over from the top here. Okay. And you can already see the difference. Yeah, I, I really yeah. can see the difference. So if you don't have foil, is, is this what yes. you use in that place yes, then? Yes, my or? husband's golf bag gets raided <laughs> and I use a little stiff brush. Lenny yeah. Lynn, stay away from my golf bag. Yeah. And all I do is same thing, okay. make sure I hit all the areas. But before it goes into his golf bag, of course, I'll wash it. So let me just see something. Let's see if this one. It's pretty, yeah, see, yeah. It's, it's even stuck on there right yeah. now. That's how it is. So if we heated this egg up right now, we'd be able to lift, lift this off. And we're gonna wanna mm -hmm. clean the inside of that cap yes, as well, right? Yes, exactly. I'll clean all up under here. And I usually will use the foil first. Okay. Then I go to the brush. But when I get up underneath little sections like this, where like say this does not come off, right. I will actually just take a little skewer and just get off any excess that I can get off. Ah, okay. Now that might be a little ridiculous, but while I'm no, cleaning it, listen, I'm gonna clean it all the, the way. Skewer method, I gotta tell you, that's one I've never thought of, but it's a really a great tool. I mean, everybody has metal skewers for, for yeah. drilling, you know? Yeah, she's a metal one, the wooden will, will break. Yeah, but look, you, sure. can already, yeah. you can see just even after I've cleaned it, there's still some under there. What a good idea. And, and again, too, here you can take that wire, you can take mm -hmm. a wire brush and hit up underneath here. Yeah, oh yeah. yeah. Yep. It's, it's kind of like my little cleaning kit. Leftover foil, little stuff, silt. Stuff that you probably mm -hmm. have around the house. And look, Brushes already. like this are available in any big box store. Yeah, what yes. a difference. Or, yeah. Yeah, big box store, like you said, golfing store yeah. or anything. Just, yeah. a, just a wire brush. Super simple, but it makes more efficiency. So when you need to choke down your fire or do anything, you don't have to struggle with it. It's just wham. You know, like this is that. great. I don't think this is anything we've actually ever covered in a video before. And I do get asked about it a lot. So I'm really glad that you brought this up yeah. because it's, it's an important thing because a lot of people freak out. They go like this and they go, Oh no, what do they I do? Think it's and they start banging on it yeah. and then the chimney breaks off the top mm -hmm. of the egg or something like that. So all you do is just heat it up, open it up, and let it heat it. up, and then clean it. So mm -hmm. that makes, I mean, it makes total sense 
and you've just taught me some things that I never really thought of about cleaning on this thing. So that's well, really a great. lot of people don't realize. You know, we do this all the time. Sure. So I pay attention to the questions I get. Yeah. We may think that's simple or never think about right. it, but it really is something that's part of regular maintenance yep. of keeping airflow and everything working together. Yep. I just want to touch on one more thing. This is the new style cap, the newer style cap from Big Green Egg. They also have the older Daisy Wheel. Those get stuck as well. Same okay? thing. Now with the Daisy Wheel, if you want to clean it up really easily, when, you, when your fire is going still and you're done cooking, take that Daisy Wheel off and throw it right down in your fire. You'll have to re-oil it when it gets out, but it's going to burn all that other stuff up here. Don't do it with this one because this one actually has rubber on it and mm -hmm. the rubber will melt and it makes a mess. So don't do it with this one, but do it with the older style Daisy Wheel. It's a great way to do it, right? Drop it right in the fire. Yep. let it burn for a little while and uh, next time you go to cook yep. take it out and, and uh, I like to oil it up and then re-season it you know season it like cast iron tip number three and I get this question all the time especially this time of year when people are getting ready to cook on their grills grilling season yep that's right grilling season it's why does mold build up in my grill is it okay to cook that way now, guys, yes guys I took one for the team here for you okay this kills me to do this to my egg so I try not to let this ever happen, but it, it can happen really easily. Um, it's all filled with mold and mildew here. Now yeah. I'm gonna let Tina cover what to do, why it happens, and all that good stuff. All right. Well, it can happen from loss of not use. You've got drippings of food and things inside there, and of course, mold and things are gonna grow on it. Also, humidity. Here in South Florida or in Georgia where I live, it's very, very humid. Keeping it closed up because you keep it sealed, it causes it to grow. So, Kind of, kind of just to reiterate that a little bit is that, is that what happens here is that, let's say you're cooking a pork butt, you get a bunch of drippings go down here. It's important, that's one of the things to use aluminum foil or use a drip pan because it'll eliminate that. If you look, this drip pan is full of mold because all the juices from the pork drip down in there and now this thing's been sealed up, got humidity in there, and now it's got developing mold, all right? One thing that I can tell you that you can do to help, this is just a quick tip to help, just Tina, excuse me one second, is when you finish up and your coals are out, just leave a little crack. Okay, just leave them open a little crack because that's going to allow some airflow to get through there and it'll prevent some of that mold from growing, right? That's that is, right, that's, yes. that's a good way to do it. So Tina, instead of doing a whole clean burn or something like that, what if you just wanted to do, kind of hit it fast so you can right. get it cooking quick? Can well, you do that? Well, the trusty foil comes in awful handy. You're starting to see a pattern here, people. Foil is your friend. Yeah, so I actually sometimes will use foil that I've already had in my grill. Yep. You mm -hmm. roll it up and use it. Sure. But Look how easy this can hit it and yeah. it comes off. It does take a lot yeah. of it off. Really I mean, quickly. yeah, exactly. So you could go ahead and start, or you can use that trusty tool. So, I mean, you know, it's it's not the greatest thing in the world, but if you need to cook quick, you all of a sudden you're getting ready to cook and you open it up and go, oh my God, it's full of mold. You can scrape it down with that, okay? And you'll be, you're will be going to be fine cooking. It's going to heat up. It's going to burn some of it off. If it does that, you know, you're going to do that. Take your, take a wood grill scraper like this, something like that. And once it heats up a little bit, just kind of give it a couple strokes across here. Even even cold, you can see it's taking, yeah, it's it, off taking it off quite a bit. And this thing, as you use it, is going to develop grooves in here to match your grate. All right, Miss Tina, so that's about it on the clean burn. Anything else you want to add to that before we move on to number four? Yeah, exactly. I think when you're doing a clean burn, uh -huh. it's really, really hot. It's a great time to put, like if you have dirty grates in, like the cast iron grates, to put in and just let it burn off. And then... You mean like that? Yeah. Okay. Uh, my goodness. So will it, will it do something for this? I mean, it's oh, all yeah. rusty, it's all... Oh yeah, well, just clean burn it, take it, you know, and brush it all off. And then I use some of the tallow product which there's a link right here. Okay. And then rub it on there and it's basically ready to go again. So you're saying when the clean burn's happening, right. throw your throw grates in. down into the fire. Right in. Just throw it. them Just right down in the fire. It. I sometimes put a couple in there. Okay. On my exhale, I'll put like three in there. So it's gonna clean the grates yeah. all up and all that. Yeah. So even the cast iron, so it'll burn all this rust off Everything here. So off. what you're saying is you take the Wagyu tallow and, exactly. and coat it Rub it on, just take a, you know, a, a wad of paper towels and yeah. coat it really well and it's all seasoned and ready to go. That's an awesome idea. I've, I've never thought about using tallow for that. Yeah, honestly, tallow you know? is perfect That's for that. Good. Now, the, the thing is though, you know, when the humid weather, we're like here in South sure. Florida or in Georgia where I live, this will happen. Yeah. I mean, it happens. It, it's, I have tried everything to avoid yeah this happening. Yeah. I really have, you know, and if you really stay on top of it, you can, but yeah. uh, you know, it, it takes a lot of work. So that's yeah. actually a great thing to know. And, so clean and burn. Clean burn. It gets it off. You've got, you have 10 minutes in there, rub it down. Once it gets cool, okay. rub it down with a towel and you're ready to go. All seasoned and ready to cook. Tina's tips are really coming in helpful here. Thank Let's move goodness. on to number four. Oh. So yeah, we're on tip number four. What's the next question that you get asked like a real lot? How much charcoal? 
Do I use? <laughs> I get that a lot too. I get that because it's kind of funny. I mean, I've been doing it for so long. Right, you don't think about it. I know it. how much to use, you know, but that's actually great choices. Yeah. So people want to know how much charcoal do I use for mm -hmm. smoking, for grilling, or anything like that? Right. I'm going to tell you this for me, yeah. I put the same amount in no matter what I'm doing. I do too. Okay. I do yep. too. Why don't we show the nice people exactly what we do? Let's show the folks. Let's show the folks. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do so we can get to our charcoal, take all that out of here. Now I got a kick ass basket and look at that. An ash covered blazer ball. You know why? Because I use it every time I use my light my grill and it stays in there while it's burning and for using next time. All right. So the, 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 the question was, how much charcoal do I use? Now, like I said, we both use the same amount. Right? Yeah. We fill it up. I, I fill it up to just below where the convector is going to sit. Yeah. Because you can always have too little charcoal. Right. Right. You can't have too much. Yeah. Because if you add charcoal, it cools down your grill. That's right. So by having a lot, when I'm finished cooking, I shut it down and reuse it when I'm cooking again the next day. Yeah. So I know we said five, but that's one pro tip we're going to add in. If your grill is burning too hot, take the stuff out, add a little more charcoal, fresh charcoal on top of your fire. Believe it or not, cool it's going it to cool down your grill. Now, back to this. Tina, I have a question before we fill it up, okay? Because mm -hmm. some people I get questions about um, like cold smoking or smoking cheeses where you want yeah. to burn at a real low temperature. Mm -hmm. Are you filling it up? I don't do a lot of that, so I don't yeah. know. Do you fill it up with that? No, actually I put not a whole lot more than what you have in here. I usually will put about maybe an inch or two in there. Okay. And then I will use the egg expander uh -huh. with the half moon grapes. Right. So that way I can have the side for the cold smoking, like the cheese or the salmon on the indirect side yep. and I can control the heat like say this is an emergency it's getting above my 200 or 175 yep. I can take out charcoal at that point you wouldn't want to add charcoal to cool it down eggheads it's not every day that I learn something new on these things so Tina's teaching me something new so we wanted to make sure and go through this I want to know exactly how to do this this is pretty cool so please walk us through the setup and show All us right. what we got going so we've got our egg expander here okay then I've got the half moon gradient this is actually the side that I will smoke the cheese or the salmon on by okay. putting a half moon in. So you put the half moon, yep. half moon deflector basically exactly. in there. Exactly. And then the grate on top. Okay, so you have this side completely open. Like, totally open. Like completely open. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like that. Slide your nuts. <laughs> so, and then what you'll do, this is the side that your fire will be on. Okay. So a really low, I mean like, just a, like two handfuls of charcoal. Okay, so let's go, go ahead and put it in. Let's All show right, them, so let's you show see them. I have just a little bit of charcoal in here. Yep. And then this just sits in. And I'm gonna turn this to the side of where the fire is. So if you see right here, this side is where your salmon and your cheese go, and this is where your heat goes. This is genius. Genius. How did I never think of this? That that's I don't amazing. Know. So I just thought of something cool. Let me go get a tool. I want to show you guys and see if this will work too. Maybe, maybe this will work too. We can okay? put our ideas together. All right. I have a question because I do get asked about cold smoke and I'm never mm -hmm. able to answer it because I don't do it. Yeah. But one of the things is that, you know, if people start to run out of charcoal in there, mm -hmm. so with this setup. Okay, I can just kind of take another piece of charcoal and, add and just it. set it down in it. The mm -hmm. other thing is, I was cold smoking and it got too hot. You take it out. So out. my answer was always take everything out. Mm -hmm. take, but like this, oh, too hot. Yeah. I think I'll just take some charcoal yeah. out. Easy, easy act makes it much easier access. So you just need some long tongs. Unbelievable, unbelievable. The good news is we sell long tongs. Perfect. But don't forget three click minimum to calibrate them every time you use them, right? Exactly. <laughs> now, I learned that from you. Yeah, well, you know, hey, calibration. I get something every <laughs> once in a while. So that's just awesome, though. I, I see my day is made, man. I can go to bed now because I love learning something new. This is now I want to cold smoke something. Yeah, so we should get some look, salmon. Look for some upcoming videos on cold smoking because this is genius maneuver right here. I love this. All right. I got a little bit excited with that really cool tip. We never finished tip four. So let's finish tip four before five. So we're going to talk about how much charcoal to put in when you're smoking or grilling. So go ahead, Tina. Let's see you fill it up to where it needs to go. Beautiful. That's, that's exactly what I do. That's exactly what I do. I fill it up to just below where the fire ring yeah. is here so that the ha convector has a little bit of room to breathe, but you got a full load of charcoal like this. You can cook for 20 hours like this. I'd oh, say yeah. like 250 and still have some charcoal left. All right, Hazel. Now we've discussed this next one. <laughs> um, and we both get this question a lot. Yeah. How much wood do I use when I'm smoking? Yeah. When do I put it in? We, all questions about smoking woods, chips, chunks, everything when smoking meats in the big green egg. From my culinary background, I learned that smoke, it's, it's all fancy, but anyway, that smoke after 140 degrees, the meat temperature, it doesn't take on positive smoke yep. flavor. Yep. So at that point, there's no need to add any more wood at all, right. which a lot of people don't like to add while they're cooking because you let out a lot of heat, right? So I put mine in to begin with by taking chunks and spreading it throughout 
the bottom. Can I interject for one moment? Please do. So what I get to is that, oh, I want to add in. I was four hours in and wanted to add wood. There is just no, no. need to add wood after you've been cooking for four hours. No. Generally, kind of for me as a rule, I go with like two hours. Yeah. You know, if you've been smoking for two hours and you've had wood in there for two hours, yeah you're pretty much got as much smoke on that wood as you're going to get. Yeah, you're more, I think, of a time cook, whereas I'm more of a temperature cook, and that could be from my training. Well, honestly, I find like if I'm cooking a brisket or something like that, it's generally started to kind of get up in that temperature range anyway, yeah. in that two to three hour range. Yeah. So so really, for, for me, I like to tell folks, some people don't, don't even have a thermometer. For me, it's about two hours in. I'm not definitely not adding any more yeah. wood. But as a matter not. of fact, I usually try and put enough in that I don't ever have to touch it. Right. You know, and we can show them how to do that right now. So let's start here, Tina. Um, what kind of wood do you usually generally like to smoke with at, at your house? I love these bourbon barrel blocks. Okay, I do too. You know, well, I, I use a lot of other you, stuff. You've got something on you, other What do <laughs> I have? Some I charcoal. Yeah. Is it off? Just, yeah, it's off. It's off? Mm. Is it off? I don't trust it. Is it off? All right, all right. So I like to use the bourbon barrel blocks too. They are, are absolutely awesome. They're a party in a bag. Mm. Oh my God, stop. They are absolutely made from bourbon barrels, okay? We sell these on our website. There's a link up above here. So this is chunks, all right? We sell these chunks. I don't use chips in mine. They just burn up so quick. You have to add them and add them and add them and add them and add them. Yeah. So what I like to do when I'm smoking, I take a bunch of these, Yeah. all right? But, you know, like we were just talking about, I like to spread it out. So I'd like if you would show us the trick that you showed me originally okay. on how to make these last so that you don't have to add them if you can still get smoke for two or three hours, all right? Okay. So let's say we were going to do a brisket. Okay, okay we're going to do a brisket. We're going to pretend we're doing a brisket. I'll take my chunks. Okay, how many do you have there? I have got like five. five. Is that about what you normally use? Yeah, okay. I think five is good because right. remember you're getting good flavor from the photo charcoal too. Right, exactly. So, so this is with a fire built in the center of the charcoal. Exactly. Right? Okay. So I will put one large one in the center and then I will distribute them all the way around in different locations of the fire. Well, the day that you taught me this, was the day I was like, my whole smoking game changed. So I used to put it in there, you know, and I'd be like, all right, well, I'd load it up with smoke, you know, oh, yeah. and for the first half hour, it was just, billowing. I mean, you know, yeah, yeah, billowing, you know? Well, this was out of necessity for me because I'm not very strong, so I have an XL, I put briskets and things like that on. Right. So I did it out of necessity because lifting it out or adding any more or anything like that. Right. So, so I've got where yeah. I just spread them around in a random pattern, make sure Makes there's sense. one in the middle. So I, I, I've done it. And all of a sudden I get done cooking, I look and a lot of my outside ones are not even touched. So I, I kind of try and put them a little, more. A little closer mm -hmm. to the fire so that over the first two hours, first two, three hours, something more like that is how I like to do yeah. mine. This way it kind of hits it really Yeah, good. that works too. Yeah. You can contradict me, it's okay. <laughs> okay, thanks. I'm not right about everything. Are you Except sure? it's with my husband. You still got some trouble. Right? Okay. Thank you. Yeah, I got what it. What would I do without her, folks? What would I do without her? I got my tongue up the street. Right? <laughs> <laughs> yes! I'm back! <laughs> if you get a snort, Oh my god, let's take a snort. Let's take a snort. Okay, all right. Oh, you. Yay! Oh, man. <laughs> they got me. Tina? Yes. I think that's five. We're done. We are done. Oh my goodness, how cool is that? So. Um, actually, I'm so glad we made this video because we, you know, we, we obviously pre-discussed what we're going to talk about. So I really did learn some stuff today. So I, I mean, I can't say thank you. I hope that they're learning some stuff because that the cheese maneuver. I mean, just the awesome. cheesy maneuver. The cheesy, no, yeah. that cheesy maneuver is not cheesy. That's 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 a great idea. So I, I love it. Um, you know, we try and provide some value. We try, you know, give some good information. Tina, you're great with this stuff. How, what, like, how do you? How do you continue to learn? What do you What do you do? Do you Is there anything you do? Do you Google things? What do you do? Yeah, I Google things. I watch your videos. Okay. <laughs> I oh, do. Oh, <laughs> no, but okay. sometimes I have to apply things just because I'm a not as strong little person. So sure. sometimes I'll have to take what other people do and yeah. you know change it a little bit to make it easier for me. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, you know, I hear all the time. I mean, we go to Egg Fest, you know, people obviously watch the videos and they come and they say, oh, you know, I learned this, I learned that, I learned this, I learned that. And it makes me feel so good. You know, I love when people are gathering new information because I want to be a sponge. I still want to keep learning. Everybody's like, yeah. oh, you're a pro at this. 
and I, I will always continue to learn. If this, you yeah. know what? Because we've done something the same way for the last 10 years, doesn't mean we should do it that right. same way the next 10 years. New things, new recipes, exactly. new, new either shortcuts, or if you like to smoke, long cuts, I'm doing different things. I so quit. you learned something today, yep. and I learned something yep. today. I quit smoking years ago. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, folks, that's all our tips. That's Tina Cannon's top five tips on the big green egg here. Um, I had a blast doing this, and, yes. and, and again, as always, thank you so much, Pearly Girl. Look her up on Instagram. Look her up on all social media platforms. Tina Cannon Cooks. Um, she's absolutely phenomenal, and she will answer your questions. Same, I will. As, same as me. So reach out and uh, let us know what you want to know. Right? You want to exactly. say goodbye to the people. Bye, folks. Remember to get out and grill, and I'll see you the next time on the Fogo Life. Captain Ron and Tina Pearly Girl. Out. out.